So as I've said, um, Leon, you were for 30 or so years, the literary editor of the New Republic, which uh, for a time was uh, considered basically the liberal answer to say National Review. And it, it was held in high regard as the magazine to go for liberal politics. So uh, in, in the nicest possible way or in the least nicest possible way, how would you describe uh, the New Republic magazine now? What would I find in the latest issue of the magazine? Nothing that you wouldn't find in the Nation or the New York Review of Books or the New Yorker or the Atlantic or there is a great uniformity of progressive opinion mm -hmm. in American intellectual journalism right now. Uh, you know, it's um, the New Republic is edited by a very fine man and it is, um, and every once in a while, there's something in there that that I would like to read, but I'm I'm afraid that it is, uh, it doesn't, it it often doesn't add that much to the conversation. Um, when we when we had it, meaning when Marty Peretz and I and Michael Kinsley and Rick Hertzberg and the late Charles Krauthammer, and mm -hmm. when we had it. Uh, we really were a bunch of angry liberals who many people thought were conservatives. Our role was twofold. It was to put intellectual pressure on liberalism so as to improve it because it had become very sanctimonious. I mean, it's often very sanctimonious. Uh, and the second one was to... Um, give an example of a group of thoughtful people who quarreled among ourselves. We did not agree with each other about everything. Uh, and it was, the, those were the, for me, the two most attractive characteristics of the magazine. Irving Howe, who was a great American critic and writer, um, once said that if you read a single issue of the New Republic cover to cover, you become cross-eyed because it just doesn't add up. <laughs> and we thought that's exactly right. Uh, yeah, which is why it was very exciting and why we had no movement at our back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, speaking of, yeah, it's, um, would you attribute, say, the death of um, print journalism? Of course, uh, Liberties is one of the few uh, journalistic outlets that offers a print version uh, or the fact that uh, American politics as well as the politics of the West has been so uh, acidic and intoxicating these days to the fact that most political writing, whether that is in liberal, uh, liberal publications or conservative, uh, tend to be very devoid of insight. Well, I, I, I'll just answer this and then Celeste can come in. I think that um, there are, it was a perfect storm in that the economic basis for, certain, for a certain kind of journalism was cut off at the knees, first by the 2008 recession and then by the internet. Mm -hmm. And that American political discourse became uh, regimented ideologically so that everybody divided up into gangs and into camps. Uh, that tends to be not good for thinking and writing. Uh, you know, the, the defenses of orthodoxy can be very witty and beautifully written as in C.S. Lewis or Chesterton, or for that matter, a great many Marxist writers. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you, you know what you're going to get when you, when you open the book, as it were. So the, intellectually, the situation has become, uh, it's somewhat simplified. It's getting complicated and a little more interesting now because there are these um, dangerous fringe groups intellectually that need to be argued against. So the, the battle is getting a little more complicated, but, um, but no, and then there is the problem of the complete degeneration of the English language in American public speech. 
uh, it's astonishing. You know, I, it, it gets lower and lower and lower. I mean, you know, people have marveled about this before. And there was a time when, when it was considered a masterpiece of political oratory when Ronald Reagan turned to Walter Mondale and said, where's the beef? And that was supposed to be eloquence of, at, at, at its most effective. Um, but now with the rise of Twitter and the acceleration of thought and speed and everything else, um, the quality of the language, meaning also the quality of the thoughts, because they usually run together, uh, has is it, it's not a golden age for that. Um, I think that this is a subject that comes up a lot, especially you know when people are talking about liberties, because the book it's the physical thing is so thick. Um, and one thing that I think gets short shrift is that. The, the media ch change, the way that the way that people go about ingesting news or information or opinions or takes morphed. But um, but people didn't. And so I, I don't think that there is a dearth of thoughtful people or of readers, proper readers for liberties. That's a good um, way to put it. Yeah, I, I think that that's an important way to look at it, because um, the, the kinds of people who stay up late, late reading books didn't die out. They're still there and they're still hungry to be fed. It's just that they're not being fed by the same uh, institutions anymore. So I, 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 don't, I don't believe that um, everybody got dumber or less thoughtful or that the number of people who are interested in, in um, nuanced and learned discourse uh, suddenly diminished significantly. I think that the media took a gamble and it was a bad one. Um, they bet that they would they would be able to survive the internet if they got shallower and simpler mm -hmm. and shorter. Um, and I do think that there we're beginning to see that we're beginning to see mainstream publications decide that that maybe was a bad idea. Um, you know, the Washington Post is now expanding its book section. Um, there are lots of publications that are doing this thing called the long read which is supposed to be like this cool new thing which is um the same you know it's it's used one to be called an essay yes. used to be called an essay and you know it's like one one essay that is as long as all of the essays and liberties um wow. so I, I just i think that like this is this has been a trend it's been a very powerful trend and it's um it's been very visible because it's happened at um, like the apex of the culture of the cultural center in America, but I don't think that the trickle down has been as severe. So as so there's so as I'm sorry for um, barging in. There is some good news. There are, I find. I mean, I'm about to turn seventy, so pardon me if I use this phrase. But I find that young people, um, more and more, I see the emergence of good old fashioned journals, um, which they proudly put out not just online, but also on paper. Um, you know, I have, I have worries about the quality of some of these journals and uh, the, the intellectual foundations of some of them. But the fact is there seems to be a certain amount of um, young people seem to, seem to grasp not just the fun, but the grandeur of an old fashioned journal of ideas. And that's very exciting. 